So what is the difference between a DVR, NVR, and DMS? I'm Carlo, I've been running Spotter Security for over 15 years, and we hate to see businesses waste money on solutions that let them down. I put together a three-part series that's gonna explain the difference between the uh, different recorders on the market. Um, so you're looking for a video surveillance system, and you come across these terms, DVR, NVR, DMS. What do they mean, and why should you care? So let's start off with the DVR. I have one here in front of me. They came out in the early 2000s, and they replaced the VCRs. Um, DVR stands for Digital Video Recorder, and they can record from 0.3 megapixel, which is VGA quality, which most people don't buy anymore, and it can go all the way up to 8 megapixel resolution. There is a set number of inputs that you can purchase the DVR with. Uh, if you look at the back, you'll see the inputs on the back here. So you can buy them in 4, 8, 16, or 32 channels. Some manufacturers have different flavors. Um, once the inputs are maxed out, you have to purchase a new DVR, stack it on top of this one, and now you'll have to have two DVRs. Um, the way it works is for analog, you'll have an analog camera, which you're gonna mount on the wall or on the ceiling, and you would run a coax cable. This is a, a little coax cable. Uh, the one that you're gonna run, if it's 100 feet or 200 feet, would have to be installed. Uh, you plug the camera in, and then you take up one of the camera inputs on the back. There's also another cable that has to run from the camera all the way to the low voltage power supply so that you can power the camera on. So now that I've given you the, uh, the high level overview of how a camera plugs into a DVR, um, I wanna to talk to you about what you need to be careful of when you're purchasing a DVR system because uh, you will feel let down uh, six months, eight months down the road if you don't be careful. Um, well, the first thing you have to worry about is the number of channels. So the number of channels is not exactly the number of cameras that you can add to your system. It's crazy because they're marketed as a eight channel DVR. However, manufacturers will often say that this DVR can go up to eight channels and up to eight megapixel resolution. Um, every DVR has a maximum amount of bandwidth. So that's the key. You have to remember that bandwidth is more important than set number of channels. Uh, this will not be in any marketing material. Sometimes it's not even in data sheets. You really have to go uh, deep and, and try to find what the bandwidth of that DVR is. So make sure you're asking that question. Um, the higher the megapixel on the camera, the lower the amount of cameras you can put onto that uh, DVR. So that's the first thing you have to be careful of. So uh, talking about bandwidth, the next thing that uh, you have to be careful of is how many people are gonna log into the system to view the cameras. So uh, the same as, as the number of cameras and resolution goes up, uh, mean it, it'll take up more bandwidth. Uh, it's the same with people viewing. So the more people that are viewing the cameras, the more bandwidth you're gonna be drawing from this DVR. So in the spec sheet, you may see up to 128 users, but realistically, if you have all these high megapixel cameras and the, the DVR is maxed out and you have 10 different people viewing these cameras at the same time, it's not gonna work. It's gonna really frustrate you and it's gonna be a big letdown when you're, you're, um, you know, when you're using the system down the road. Uh, so the, you have to think about how you're gonna set up the system. Is this, are these cameras just gonna be set up to record and it's gonna sit in an IT room and then whenever you need footage, you just log in and, and do a video review, either yourself or somebody else just logs in. I mean, that's gonna be fine. You're probably not gonna have any issues with that. Um, but if you wanna start using the system a little more um, advanced and have multiple people logging into this thing at once at the same time, for instance, a receptionist looking at two or three cameras or a warehouse manager looking at uh, another 10 cameras, once you start doing that, it really becomes a, a little bit of a pain and you have, to, you have to start looking at a different type of solution. So I guess what I'm trying to get at is uh, when you're looking at these DVRs, um, especially these type of ones, where they're called embedded DVRs, is that there's not a whole lot that goes into uh, the manufacturing or the software development of them. So I'm gonna open this thing up for you and show you what I mean. As you can see inside, there's not a whole lot. You have a hard drive, and then you have a small motherboard or circuit board that's running the recorder. Um, it's not that advanced, and, and why I'm telling you this is because um, when you start using these systems, if you start to max out and you start to get into higher numbers of cameras, uh, anything beyond 16 cameras really starts to become a little bit painful. Um, loading this 
free you know uh, software that comes with these DVRs onto your computer and trying to have so many different users log in to view it uh, and expanding it to multiple DVRs and, and multiple cameras will start to really get complex and really really annoying so I, I would I'd be really careful when you're looking at higher number of cameras uh, the DVR uh, and analog camera space is typically between you know smaller counts four to eight cameras and I, I would personally max it out at 16. Once you pass 16 cameras, you want to start looking at something else. So that was a brief overview of DVRs and analog cameras. If you want to know more, you can read our blog post. The link is given below. Uh, visit our website for some more information or give us a call and you can book a free online design session where we will uh, design a system for you and, and help you pick some products. In the next video, we're going to talk about NVRs. So stay tuned for that.